So hi, my name is Linda Freiner, and I'm here to represent the Zurich Flood Resilience Alliance, which uh, takes an innovative approach to cross-sector collaboration. So why floods? Well, there are too many alarming facts that most of you are too familiar with. Flood risk have been rising globally due to population growth, urbanization, and economic development in hazard-prone area. It's actually a disaster that causes more losses than all other disasters. And it all indicates that climate change induced sea level rises will increase this risk. At the same time, people are drawn to live on floodplains because of the economic opportunities, and it is increasingly recognized that communities cannot totally avoid risks, thus living with the risk, it's the imperative. Our own study of a large number of DRR uh, studies confirms that for every dollar spent on risk reduction measures, you can save five dollars in reduced and avoid losses. So there is a, still an enormous opportunity to innovate when it comes to flood risk reduction measures. However, this is a very complex issue, and as such, it really demands a multidisciplinary approach. And uh, our response is to bring a number of organizations together from academia, humanitarian sector, and the private sector to form an alliance that provides a holistic view of the issue, and each organization is bringing a different uh, role to deliver the goals of the alliance. Our starting point is based on the belief that communities need to build resilience from the ground up. We have started working in some of the most vulnerable communities uh, and working with them to develop new ideas that they can take when it comes to flood risk risk reductions. And the Alliance is using a participatory and an iterative approach to do so. And we also try to tackle flood risk and development in synergy. Practical Action, a UK-based NGO, is using technology to improve the lives of the poorest. Working across Bangladesh, Peru, and Nepal, we are using technology to develop and improve early warning systems, as well as looking for alternative livelihoods and to ensure access to markets for income generation, which enable these communities to cope with floods. The International Federation of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent Societies is a member organization that consists of 189 national societies, all with an unparalleled access to local and national governments and wider communities. They are already working with community-based disaster risk reduction programming, but we are going into Indonesia and Mexico trying to improve this methodology by including the expertise from the Alliance partners. So Zurich Insurance, well, we play two roles in this Alliance. First of all, providing the financial funds with an initial investment of 32 million Swiss francs from the Zurich Foundation. But more importantly, we're also contributing with our skills and expertise in risk and hazard management. And we want to make sure that we go beyond being a typical donor to being a fully engaged partner in the program. Our research partners, the International Institute of Applied System Analysis, IASA, and the Wharton School have extensive expertise when it comes to assessing the drivers of risk and the understanding of resilience worldwide. And by engaging in our community programs, they are developing enhanced cost-benefit analysis as well as other decision-making tools and, and, of course, also validating the impact of our work. Building the alliance is a learning process for all the partners involved. We are committed to ensuring that we, we maximize the effectiveness of working together, not just when it comes to the impact of our work, but also of the partnership itself. Each organization is contributing with resources, and we try to really create more than just the sum of our parts. 
And um, before I close here today, um, I would like to invite you all to our side event, which is taking place at 1 to 3.30 at the campus in room C205. And we're gonna, really going to have an interactive discussion around the different country programs that we're running and the challenge that we're facing in terms of really trying to empower communities to take control of their own situations, to find new solutions that can help them improve resilience, as well as interacting with local governments. So, um, before I close, any questions from the audience? Then thank you very much for your attention and for passing by here today.